Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, in analyzing this budget, it's only proper that we Every cast our mind. Every space for 10 minutes. From it's only both sides. Thank you. It's only proper we cast our mind when the 2017 budget was read. Indeed, there was jubilation in Abosokai. There was jubilation everywhere. It has begun nine months down the line. The popular saying at Abosokai is that Nana Dada, to wait, Nana has deceived us. Mr. Speaker, let me put on record Order. that it is not true Order. that you inherited an economy with rising inflation. And if you read the monetary policy report of the Bank of Ghana, September 2017, it will tell you that inflation declined as of January 19% to December 15.4%. 15 if you decline from 19 to 15.4%, you cannot tell us that you inherited an economy with a rising inflation. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there is a popular saying that unto whom much is given, much is expected. No one has said that growth with GDP is not important. Honorable members, there will be no responses to my right. But it's only proper that in doing analysis, we do the non-oil and the oil. Because we went to countries like Trinidad and Tobago, we went to Nigeria, we went to Norway, and adopted a process where in every financial year, we give the oil and the non-oil growth so that we do not fall into the dark disease. And so when we subject that to scrutiny, it's only fair, it is only proper. Yes. You have given us a growth rate of 7.9%. Mr. Speaker, this government, in the history of this country, has had the highest volumes of oil in the history of this country. The highest volumes. And Mr. Speaker, this is a graph that tells you of the volumes. Last year, Mr. Speaker, we had 32 million. This year, under this government, you are getting over 60 million, meaning that you are getting more than 100% of the oil. But not just that. Mr. Speaker, the most important thing are the amounts or the receipts. From the minister's own budget, as of September 2016, Ghana had 172 million. As we speak today, Ghana has had 362 million, more than a 100% jump in petroleum revenue. And so when you have a gross rate, a growth rate of 7.9%, Mr. Speaker, when you see a child with a very big protruding belly, but with very weak Legs, you might think that that child is doing well, but I can tell you this growth rate is a for sure co growth rate as far as we are concerned. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, let me also put a record that the 2016 growth rate, as put out by my honorable colleague, is not 4.9. I have the Ghana Statistical Service report. The revised GDP growth rate, the non oil, in 2016 is 5.0. This is what the minister himself tells us. Mr. Speaker, I refer to paragraph 56 of the minister's own statement, not my statement, what the minister read to us. Mr. Speaker, and I quote, non-oil real GDP grew at an estimated 4.0% in the first half year of 2017, compared to 59 during our time. You grow the non-oil, 4.0%. We grow the non-oil 5.9% and you tell us with audacity that you are better managers of the economy than we do. Mr. Speaker, I think it's time we look into the face of our friends and tell them when it comes to growing this country, when it comes to the productive sectors, the NDC has proven to be better managers of the economy than you are. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, there's a popular saying. Order, order. Mr. Speaker, there's a popular saying that agrobesoa if you are not part. To wit, the beginning of events or coming events cast their own shadows. Mr. Speaker, it's only under this government that you give us an Azempa budget and yet you give us petroleum price increment of an average of 25%. You promise to reduce taxes. You promise to take away levies. You describe the energy sector levy 
as an obnoxious tax. Mr. Speaker, go to page 168. This year alone, the minister is expecting proceeds from ESLA of more than $2 billion per annum. And yet you go to the capital markets, you are unable to raise more than 80% and come to the house and tell us to clap for you. How on earth can you ask us to clap for you when you've not been achieving, achieving what you want? I think that it is obvious. Mr. Speaker, the minister told us, and it's important, if you don't spend in your capital sector, if you don't spend on CAPEX, you are going to see the stunted growth that you're experiencing in the real sector. And we have vindicated, Mr. Speaker. It's not about what I say. It's not about what you say. You say that you want to adopt an approach of revenue expenditure. We said we believe in an approach of capital expenditure, of infrastructure, and the figures are there. Whilst we are doing 5.0, you are doing 4.0. And so sit with us. We shall teach you how to deal with it and how to do it. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the minister promised us, and I quote from the 2016 budget, Mr. Speaker, the minister told us in the 2017 budget that electricity growth rate moved from 80.5% to 83.24%. Coverage, we have a policy to have universal access by 2020. In the 2018 budget, you grew the electricity subsector in terms of access by 0.5%, not even half. No wonder you have stunted growth in the real sector. No wonder you have a convoluted growth. No wonder you have a distorted growth. Mr. Speaker, it is obvious that if we continue to grow at 0.4%, it will take us up to the year 2050 before we achieve what the NDC was on course to achieve in 2020. Mr. Speaker, I have here the quarterly GDP figures for the agriculture sector from the Ghana Statistical Service. Page 17, it tells you, despite the ministries we've created, despite the plethora of the ministries we've created, the fishing sector is grown by a negative 17.6% under this administration. No wonder it has not been captured in the budget. 17.9%. And you want us to clap for you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this cannot be. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The minister promised to extend electricity to 2,185. This year is done 13%. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, because of time, the minister laid a claim here. And we cannot allow that claim to go unchallenged. The minister claimed that under the watch of the MPP administration, they have solved the Doomsa challenge. Mr. Speaker, we would not sit on consent. We would not sit quiet for the MPP to appropriate our achievements and present them as theirs. <laughs> it will not happen. Because the minister himself admits that in 2016, we added 880 megawatts of additional capacity yeah. to the system. This year's budget, in that, the minister gave a list of this year's budget, he mentions 470 and chooses not to tell us where that 470 is coming from. Amen. Let me place it on record that that 470 megawatts of thermal capacity is the car power by the president. Yeah. 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 And so, that is the aspect of generation. But the finance sector, if we did not introduce ESLA, if you were not getting two billion as you quoted, could you have gotten to the market to raise those monies? You couldn't. And so I want to plead with the minister. Give credit where credit is due. And you will get credibility for that. But you cannot misappropriate our achievements. Having worked hard, having resolved doom so, having left a resilient, strong, robust energy sector for you, and despite all this, you grow a real GDP rate, a non-oil GDP rate of just 4.0%. That cannot be the growth that we want. Mr. Speaker, I see a very bleak future. If we continue on this tangent, if you continue with what we are doing, Thank you, Mr. 
Speaker, in conclusion, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, if we continue on this tangent, Mr. Speaker, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm a cautious optimist. If we continue on this tangent, sooner than later, we shall return to the days of doom. So, if we continue this way, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker, for this year.